Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Jason Donnelly, a.k.a. DJ Puzzle, reporting for my blog, iPadLoops.com. And today we're going to have a look at Wood Stepper by Woodman's Immaculate Maple Syrup Studio. And this is going to be more of a quick start guide, so we won't touch on everything, but I'm going to just show you guys in Elm what we can do. Let's slow the tempo down here. And we'll use Axon 2 because this will automatically generate it's got a built-in sequencer it'll generate some sounds that we can use to process through wood stepper so we'll grab an instance of wood stepper in the effects slot okay first thing you're going to notice is when you hit play you're not going to hear anything from axon 2. why is that well, it's running through Wood Stepper. So, and so the first thing you want to do is dial the wet dry mix back a little. Okay. It comes with the default setting of wet all the way wet. All right. So now we can hear the unprocessed signal. So here you can press DAW and sync to your DAW's tempo and you'll see that automatically adjust for you right there. Okay. So there's a tap tempo as well. All right, so up here at the top here, you'll see all your different settings. Uh, there's a start button for starting the sequencer and then a play step button for playing each of the individual steps when you are setting parameters per step. So to break it down, we're looking at like a four track sampler. Or you can use it as a four track DSP and process your audio through it. Each one has its own step sequencer and over here is sort of like the mixer where you can adjust the levels for each one so you can sample into it or you can process audio through it and here you would set the timing the length of the steps okay so you'll see there's eight steps there right but you can set the length of a step so now I've got it set. So just set each one to just uh, whatever different lengths just to get started. And you can also link the sequencers. So you've got four independent eight step sequencers, which can be linked to 16, 24 or 32 step sequencer. And that just gives you that much more to work with. Pretty cool. So we can get uh, deeper into that later on, uh, perhaps in a future video, because you know what, when I first started this up, I was lost and there are no presets to really get you going. So a uh, couple of things that I wanted to mention right away. Uh, here's a start. Now you can see when you start the sequencer, you can see all the dots indicating the lengths. You can see all the patterns playing. Okay. All right. So you see down here, it's taking its time. That's because that particular track is set to one bar. All right, so let's go ahead and run the audio through. We're going to select track audio and run it through Woodstepper and we'll check out some of the effects. So the first one here is a pitch effect. All right, it's like a transpose effect and turn the sequencer off, crank up the wet mix just so you can hear what it's doing and check it out. You can set the pitch adjustment, the pitch settings here and select all steps and that will apply those settings to the whole pattern. Okay. You can turn all steps off and now you can set a different setting here, a different pitch setting for each step and play step will allow you to skip through and hear and see the different settings that you have per step. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of randomly mess around and set some different uh, pitch settings for each step. And there's one. Uh, there's a glide knob here. You can glide. So when you change, if you move to the next step and you want to glide up to a different pitch setting, you can do that. Uh, and then there's a random button, which is great. And then I'll just choose some random notes from, if you want, from a scale. You can set a certain scale there, or you can set it to free form. Uh, here you can transpose. And so each step will have a different setting and just something random and extreme here. And you'll see when I press play that uh, you'll hear, let's see, I'm gonna press start, sorry. And then you'll hear and see all the changes. So 
So there you have it. And the great thing about this is that it can send a MIDI information as well per, per step. So you'll see the changes are, are occurring here. And then there's like an amplitude envelope here. Uh, it's sort of like a, a transient designer in a way. You can um, you know, soften the attack or you know shorten the release and the sustain per step. And so you can really get that audio to do some interesting things. For example, I could see I probably should have uh, showed you this with a, a pad sound, some kind of sustained drone, because you can you know you can achieve some pretty cool rhythmic effects just by adjusting each step uh, and with different sustain and, and release times. Um, so that's something you can experiment with as well. So yeah, I mean, on drums, it's fun. It, it's almost kind of like a interesting sort of like glitch effect that you can achieve with these uh, settings. Um, but, you know, imagine it on, like I said, a drone or a pad or a vocal, you know, you could really dial in some cool gating effects with this uh, per step. So it's pretty much kind of like a gate in, in a way uh, with, with the sequencer. So let's go ahead and check out the filter now with the filter. So all steps, turn it off so we can put different filter settings on each step. All right, so there's all these uh, different filter settings here. You can choose from this uh, Moog for pole low pass filter. And uh, I'm in all steps. So what I change here, it's just basically applying a filter over the overall, that whole pattern, uh, not per step. So we'll kind of give you an idea of what that sounds like. There's a saturation knob, pretty nice. I like to crank that up from time to time. So yeah, I think we've kind of got like sort of a choppy sound going now. Um, ooh, watch out for that resonance there. Here we go. Might want to put your headphones on. Now we're getting something interesting. Dial a little bit of the dry in, and now you can kind of hear it in the background. And we'll add some delay now to that. So over here, you'll see we're in all steps. So it's going to apply a delay overall, the same setting again to the whole pattern. And that'll kind of help us. So a high pass filter and a low pass filter on the delay as well. And another additional saturation. So you can saturate the delayed signal. Um, pretty cool. Again, we're working in uh, track audio. So really, this isn't sampling. It's just the DSP. Um, just kind of giving you guys an idea as far as uh, how track audio works. Um, you can also go over here and send MIDI information as well. You've got all different cool different MIDI parameters, MIDI CC that you can send and record. Uh, so per step, you know, or whatever, and all this information can be converted to MIDI or is MIDI in the background and uh, is you know can be sent to an external like a synth or whatever. Um, so you know you've got all these cool MIDI options as well. I'm not going to dive too deep into that right now because um, that's probably material for a part two. This video is already long as it is. I just kind of wanted to get you guys started on the basics. So, you know, you might want to dive into some MIDI stuff later um, or we could do another video just for the MIDI because like I said, this app is super deep. Uh, but I really just kind of wanted to get you guys using it as a DSP in your effects chain. And next we'll talk about using the sampler in Woodstepper, which is what I think is gold. So you've got panning over here. Um, just to sum it all up, this, those are the effects. And and uh, what now? Let's move on and try to get into the sampling aspect of Woodstepper because that's what I think Woodstepper is really, really cool for, uh, is for sampling.
All right, so let's have a look at Woodstepper as a sampler. So on track two, source two, uh, we're gonna select, instead of track audio, we're gonna use sampled track. All right, so if you hit armed, as soon as you hit armed, it's gonna start sampling. Now there's a threshold setting to tell it when to start sampling, but we're gonna automatically sample with this bad boy. And we've already grabbed, now you see a short, audio loop okay and you can set the duration of that sample sample time there if you want it's right there okay we sampled at the, at the time we only sampled what an eighth note so once I set that to one bar now it's only playing that one eighth note that it grabbed so we're gonna change that setting to a longer duration, arm it and grab a sample. Now notice I just sampled it in and I stopped home. Okay, so you can hear what we just grabbed into that sampler. Now next, first step, let's click first step here, okay? And try again so that it'll grab it on the next, on the first step. And let it go and let it record. It's still recording, it's sampling, you see. And uh, we want to sample the entire bar of audio. All right, boom. Now stop, ohm, and you can hear our sample. Okay. The track two, it's sampled in. Everything's good to go. It's playing for one bar. Okay, that's what we set the timing to. You can go in and do another a third one. Source three. Okay, and the timing for source three, uh, we've got quarter notes, so that should be decent. So what I'm gonna do here is set that to eighth notes. Play, I'm gonna play album, so axon two plays in the background. Hit source, hit source, and arm it now, boom. Oops, I forgot, uh, clear that. I'm gonna hit first step first and then arm it. Okay, now let it sample, and we're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off. You can adjust the threshold, the sampling threshold here. Uh, that is, I believe, what it uses to trigger the uh, start sample point. So with that set, you can uh, have it come in at a certain time once it crosses a, a certain volume threshold. And the sample start knob there is pretty obvious. Uh, sample end, that'll allow you to adjust the length of the sample once you have it in. And here's a mixer. You might have to hit source twice to bring that up. You can adjust the levels for each track. All right, now you hear two sampled tracks. Okay, and they're playing, the patterns are playing at different lengths. And it gets a little chaotic at times, but you know what, sometimes that's cool. Depending on the sound that you're using sampling, you might come up with something really interesting. And some people, they might want to work on glitch music and use this as a tool for glitch rhythms all right so source four what's oh, it sorry source one is track audio that's good all right so that's the track audio mixed with the sampled audio okay you can hear that in the background I'm gonna adjust the mix all right once we adjust the mix, we'll uh, hear the different tracks a bit more balanced. All right. So wow, that sounds pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and sample something into Source 1. Uh, okay, let's grab, uh, grab a quarter note. Arm clear, okay, here we go. And they're sampling. Crazy. It's 
stop ohm and now we're hearing all sampled audio three tracks Sometimes you have to often oh, forget. Sometimes I'm looking for the uh, the mixer to adjust the levels, and so um, what I found was that you hit source, stop that, source twice, and it'll pull it up, and uh, you'll find your mixer there. So let's let's go ahead and adjust the the mix again. change the timing and of course we get this instant visual feedback here so yeah this is a really cool app for experimenting and creating some crazy rhythms and uh, let's have a look at the advanced tab you can save the samples with your preset polyphonic MIDI input you can link all steps MIDI program change mode. CC enable and all his MIDI parameter settings here. And uh, stereo mode and sequencer start play. Now this sequencer start play is a totally different thing. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Let me just save my preset real quick. Yeah, I had my brightness up a little too high, sorry. Yeah, so I moved into a new studio, so I do apologize for uh, all my settings and everything. This is the first video I've shot in the new studio, and I haven't shot a video in a long time. I uh, really want to thank you guys for staying subscribed and checking me out. Um, I'll have the videos a bit more tweaked uh, as I tweak the studio over time. I just haven't really haven't had any free time to do that uh, with scoring music for a video game, but I'm done with that now, so... You can expect more videos and more higher quality videos. Uh, eventually, I'm going to get the studio more dialed in. Now, oh, you can totally uh, grab more samples from a different pattern. And we'll use Source 4 sample track. Source 4, all right, and check out the, the settings, all right. Now, this is uh, armed, and there we go. Now, there's, see, that's not playing because we changed the uh, settings under the advanced tab, okay? So it's waiting now for us to play. There we go. Now you see it started playing when I hit play in Aum. And that's under the advanced tab. Okay, so we recorded that sample. Let's see how that sequencer start. Uh, change the, the manual adjustment here. Okay, now we can just play it independently so yeah that's something you might you know set in your preferences for a preset or whatever uh, whatever you know you find works best for you you might want to leave that play on so that always works when you play your host DAW uh, and that's with some pitch settings Yeah, I'm just gonna tweak away and rock out with this uh, little bad boy and um, hopefully uh, you guys got it all figured out, sorted, and hopefully this inspires you to use it in ways that maybe you uh, had no idea it was capable of doing. Um, also, 
you know, I want to thank you guys again for tuning in and for subscribing to my channel. And uh, if you want to support, go ahead and please check out my Patreon account. It's patreon.com slash DJ Puzzle. And I give away a lot of promo apps and free sample packs. And it helps me keep my website online, iPadLoops.com. And it also helps me to uh, pay for food and stuff and things when I'm working on videos to help you guys learn new apps. So I really appreciate anything you do. Thumbs up, subscribe, share. And if you have a buck or two, Patreon. Also, you can check out my other website, SoundtrackLoops.com, and buy sample packs if you want uh, to support me. That would be great. Uh, we've got Dean from Electrona Sounds Audio on there as well. We sell his packs, and he has some great videos too. So, um, shout out to Dean. And wow, this app is just a lot of fun. So, I really want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope it helped clear this up a little bit. There's more to this app oscillator section and midi stuff i'd love to do a part two if the time permits but again it's kind of a quick start hopefully this will get you guys going with the wood stepper thanks for watching see you on the flip side